welcome to the start of another weekend vlog. So like, like I said in my last vlog, I am splitting these up for Vlogmas and maybe forever doing a weekly vlog and then a weekend vlog. And so welcome to the weekend, TGIF. So last night we started watching The Great Christmas Light Fight and that's one of my favorite shows. It's just like so perfect for this season and so fun and the families work so hard and I just love watching it. So it airs on Wednesday, but we had been saving it and we still have part of it left. So that is a day maker. And then Today, this morning, I had Annie's six-month doctor appointment, and she did so good. She is um, holding strong at the 20th percentile in weight and the 90th in height, so she is doing great and just getting so big. It's like really the second kid goes so much faster, but she, last night, we pulled out the high chair, and um, because we did baby led weaning with Ainsley, and we're going to do it again with Annie, and so bas basically what that is is you just give them like pieces of what you're eating and they get to eat it and I got the high chair out just so she could sit because she is happy if she gets to watch her sister so she was happy but she was like eyeing her food and so I think it's time tomorrow is when she's actually six months and since we celebrate half birthdays in our house during COVID um, I think we're going to do something special and try to hold off and feed her let her have her first bit of food tomorrow so that's really exciting and um, I'm just a little bit in denial, but this morning's advent was um, donate, donate toys to kids who need them more than we do. And so Ainsley, I just am so proud of this little girl. We went through our upstairs and our downstairs and she filled a whole big bag of things that she thinks other kids would enjoy more than we do and that she was more than happy to share with. And so we just went and donated those and I am so excited and so happy. And now we are gonna go on a hunt for inflatable um, snowmen or, or Santas or something and see what we can find because we are just out and about. It's almost lunchtime, but we're gonna go celebrate and do something a little bit fun. So as far as reading goes, I'm in the middle of Friday night, no, Christmas Eve at Friday Harbor. I don't know why I keep wanting to call it Friday night something or another, but Christmas Eve at Friday Harbor by Lisa Claypiss. This is the first in her Friday Harbor series, and so far I'm just loving it. It's about this guy who his sister dies and leaves her daughter, her young daughter, with him. And so he is not, I mean, he's single. He's not at all like wanting to be a dad, but he is like got this soft spot for this little girl. And then our main female is a toy store owner and she like gets in the good graces with this little girl. And the little girl is selectively mute after her mother's death. So um, she starts talking again and it's all just great and sweet and fun. I can't wait to see how the romance progresses. And then as far as audio goes, I'm listening to Postscript by Cecilia Hearn. And I'm so excited for this one. It is the follow-up to P.S. I Love You. And I'm like almost done with it. And um, you get a lot of Holly and Jerry from like you get to know more about their relationship. If you guys have read the first um, P.S. I Love You, then you'll know what I'm talking about. But you get more of their relationship as well as, well as where Holly is now. And she is helping all these people who want to like leave notes and that kind of thing for their loved ones because they're all suffering from some sort of terminal disease. Um, so far I'm really enjoying it. And Holly, man, she is a type two Enneagram, I would say to the extreme. She is a helper and like she will sacrifice herself to help these people and it's really sweet. So that is what I'm reading. Um, like I said, we're going to go on a hunt for some inflatables and then we're going to go home and eat lunch. And, um, it's a gloomy, dreary day here and it's cold. So We'll just be hanging out inside, maybe do some baking this afternoon or something. Um, I had posted on Instagram that I, our local grocery store accidentally gave us butternut squashes instead of spaghetti squashes like I ordered. And so I had two butternut squashes and no idea what to do with them. So one of them we roasted and just ate in cubes last night. And it's okay. Um, I love kabocha squash, which is like a Japanese pancake, uh, not pancake, Japanese pumpkin. And it's only available in the fall. And so like that, I feel like has ruined all of their squashes for me. And we like sweet potatoes. Like they're all good. Um, I, butternut squash is just not my favorite, but um, it was, it was good. And then tonight I'm making butternut squash soup with the other one. So that's what we're doing. It's the perfect day for soup. So I'll vlog it if I can. 
We all know I'm not the best at that, but I will try it and I'll check in later. Saturday at 11:45, and I am here again to tell you that I just did a very fun Zoom in or uh, TGI friend day. I don't even know what it's called right now. And again, I did not push record. And this time, I have no idea why. Like last time, I was like because I was on the call way before I was supposed to be, and so I didn't want it, like five minutes of me just sitting there by myself, and so I didn't push record for that reason. I did it again. Like, I'm like questioning my ability to film anything right now. <laughs> I am so frustrated with myself. I hate this. Like, lost footage is a thing. In fact, like, I have been talking to a few other people who have had lost footage. That's a thing. And it's like out of control. This is me being so silly. And like, I just hate wasting other people's time. But... <sighs> It was a fun one. It was planned for January, which is why my Christmas tree is not in here because I took it out um, because I didn't want, like, Christmas. It was going to come in January. So, to um, the person I recorded with, I'm so sorry again. I have got to, like, put a reminder on my computer or something to push record. Darn it. Um, in other news, last night I... Um, had said I was not going to read. I was just going to catch up on YouTube because my watch later list is so long from Vlogmas and I am so like wanting to watch all of that footage. So I was like, okay, I'm going to not read. I'm just going to do that. And then um, the night turned different. So Annie, I was holding her last night, like she had her shots and everything yesterday. And it was just so funny. Like on the way home, I was thinking, gosh, for second kid problems, I would have with my first kid, like shot day meant like we were just going to snuggle and not a whole lot was going to happen. And it was just going to be kind of a quiet, cuddly day. Well, with the second kid, I mean, you can't do that because I had Ainsley and so I wasn't able to cuddle, whatever. Then Annie was just a little bit out of sorts, not terrible. She is such a smiley little girl that like, and she was continuing to be pretty smiley, seemed to be just hunky-dory. And I was drinking, last night I had like a frozen, um, we make these like frozen coffee drinks that are kind of like frappuccinos, but they're in, like we just use it in the blender cup. And so the blender cup is cold to the touch. And so she keeps, like I'm holding her and trying to drink it. And she keeps like touching it and like really like freaking out. But she keeps touching it. And so I'm like, what is going on with you? And I'm holding her and like we were in the living room, had the fireplace on, that kind of stuff. And so like we were hot and I was thinking it was just because the stuff was on, whatever. Well, I take her upstairs and like lay her down and she is like shivering and so pale. This girl had 101.4 fever and I, one, felt like a terrible mother because I don't know how long she had it. Two, like she was trying to touch my cup and she was so fevery and shivery anyway that it was like really making her freeze. And you guys, it was just a not good mothering moment and so I put gave her some Motrin and then put her to bed while I put Ainsley to bed and then I went and got her because I just needed her to sleep with me I needed to be able to cuddle her they say with babies especially like skin to skin and frequent nursing and stuff can really help with that kind of stuff because it's a and I called the nurse hotline because you would think I'm a first time mom, but, um, like she's six months old getting a fever like that just feels, feels very high. But the nurse line said, if it's under 105, they're good under 105. And I'm like freaking out that it's 101. And so, um, yeah, I just wanted her, she's never had a fever and, and like with COVID she is so sheltered. She has not had anything. So, um, 
she's never had a fever and so I just didn't know how she would react how she would do and like I wanted to be right there if anything happened or if she woke up so she slept with me and it was great I like I don't co-sleep but I totally get why people do because there's nothing more comforting than like having them sleep right there and Ainsley now may do it. I don't know. She We moved her into her own room so young that, like, she had before has not co-slept at all. Like, she just won't do it. She won't fall asleep. And so, um, yeah, that was our night. So then we woke up at 2, and she still had a temperature of 99.4, so I gave her a little bit more Motrin. And Annie is also, like, Ainsley, you put medicine in her mouth, and she would suck it right down. And she's still that way. Like, if she is sick, she asks for medicine. She loves it. She, like, is a very good medicine taker, vitamin taker, whatever. Annie, on the other hand, is like, why are you putting it in my mouth? This is disgusting. And she was, kept, like, making these faces, like, gross and so, like, getting medicine in her is really, really hard. So, anyway, I gave her some more at 2 o'clock, and then this morning she is fine. And so, I don't know, you guys. I'm just, like, right now especially, I'm like, so many fails. So many fails. But that is it. So, then I had said, like, I'm going to do all this booktube watching but with Annie being in bed with me, I didn't want to do that because I didn't want to wear headphones because then if I fell asleep, blah, 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 blah. So I ended up finishing both of the books I was reading. So I finished um, Friday, what is it? Christmas Eve at Friday Harbor by Lisa Kleypas. And I keep talking about this book um, to Bree and Sarah on our little chat. And I like keep saying the wrong title. Every time I update, I am say the wrong title. Christmas Eve at Friday Harbor. This has also been made into a movie, and it's called Christmas with Holly because our main character is Holly. And I like that title better just because, one, it's more memorable and easy to, like, keep straight. And, two, um, this is very christmas light, I would say. So, like I said, it's about a man who gets custody of his niece because his sister dies. The girl's selectively mute. He and Holly have this relationship like they meet in her toy shop and she makes a connection with the little girl so then they have a relationship it's kind of a not um like kind of a grumpy sunshine I don't know he is very like taking his role as dad seriously and is a little hesitant to start the relationship but and like and she is a widow um and so like she's hesitant to start the relationship so it's not really a grumpy sunshine it's more just like they're very hesitant to enter into this relationship but then they do, and it's great, and it's sweet, and I love, like, kids and books, and so this one is fun for me. It is um, pretty short. I think it's 200 and something pages, and it's the first in her Friday Harbor series. So the next is Rain Shadow Road, and I have that one, too, and so I think I'm going to pick it up sometime in the near future. But Lisa Kleypas, um, I have read... Well, now two of her contemporary and one of her, her historical. And I think I really like her contemporary. The one historical that I read is, um, it's a blue cover. And I think it's part of the Hathaway series, maybe. And I did not love it. And I know a lot of people do love that. So I think for Lisa Claypas, I'm probably going to stick with her contemporaries. Um, but this one was really cute. I haven't rated it or written my review yet, but I would say probably like a three and a half, um, cause it was better than average. Probably not something I'm going to remember a whole lot, but Bree said the movie is really good. And so I need to check that out. So then the other thing that I finished was Postscript by Cecilia Hearn. And I've talked about this a little bit as I'm reading it and I am really enjoy, or like I really enjoyed it. Um, this is about Holly. She is the female from P.S. I Love You. Her husband in P.S. I Love You found out he had brain cancer and started writing her a letter every month, um, and talking just to her and everyone ended with P.S. I Love You and it was sweet and it was emotional and now this is years later. Um, her sister, she works on her sister's podcast, like they work together and the podcast is all about like kind of death, I think. And this group of people approaches her after she tells her story and they are all suffering from different kind of terminal illnesses and they ask her to help them do different things to um, give to their loved ones after they pass. And like I had said in an earlier clip, she is a Enneagram type 2 to the extreme, a people helper for sure, and she is very... Um, 
very involved in this project and I liked it. I liked learning more about Jerry and her relationship. I liked seeing um, her growth and her really like grieving process and um, how, you know, kind of being reintroduced into the, that thought process and like not that her husband was ever forgotten, but being taken back to that place, how she was able to manage that. And so I really enjoyed this one. Now I am reading... I'm going to get up yet again. I don't know what these clips will look like. Probably super spliced together. But I was not prepared because I'm just so thrown off by my lack of recording. So now I'm picking up The House at the End of Hope Street. And this is by Mina Van Prague. Um, I don't know where I heard about this or where I got this at all. But it's really interesting. It's got some magical realism. It's about this girl who lives in Cambridge, I think, and she stumbles upon this house um, at 11 Hope Street. And this house is unique, and this woman is unique. She can see things that other people can't see. And so she um, goes into this house. This old lady kind of runs the house, and it's a house for people who have run out of hope. And this house is full of, like, historical literary characters and just historical characters in general, I think. And people who have, like, supposedly stayed at this house when they were at their end of their hope rope. <laughs> and um, so that's what this is about. I'm pretty early into it. But I have finished all of the Create Your Own Holiday Adventure prompts except for Hope for Humanity and... Um, What's the other one? And fun friend group, I think. And so I'm hoping this will do Hope for Humanity. That's, I mean, Hope Street, you know, I don't know. Talks a lot about hope. I really hope. <laughs> uh, how many times can I say hope? Um, the other thing I picked up is the eight. Oh, I'll put up a picture. I can't even remember what it was. But I needed something for um, a holiday other than Christmas. And so I picked up this kid's book on Libby. Because I've never read a like picture book, kids book on Libby like that. And so I just wanted to see how it was. And I wanted to check out this kids book. And I gave it eight winter nights, I think is what it's called. Which you guys will be saying it the whole time. So that revelation means nothing to you. But um, I gave it three stars because it is told in um, poems. And so it's poems about like what this family does every one of the eight nights of Hanukkah. And I liked it. Um, at the end, there's a big, like, prose explanation of the holidays and the th the traditions that they are doing and that kind of stuff. But if you were just reading the poems, like, to your kids, um, it would not be enough to, like, introduce um, Hanukkah or those traditions or anything to them because it is very much written for somebody who already knows what's going on. And I think that is not a downfall of the book at all. Um it was just, it was a really, really fast and okay thing. Um, the back part, I'm glad that that back part was included um, because I, you know, some of the stuff I didn't know necessarily, like what all the sides of the dreidel are. And it does a good job explaining that as an introduction. Like I almost feel like you need to read that and then read the po poems part. But so I read that to fulfill that prompt and it was good. Um, just a fun quick little picture book and they have like a bunch at the library that I really want to go get um to just kind of teach Ainsley about some different holidays but I think I'm going to save it till next year when she's more able to understand because I think that would be a really fun like homeschool preschool unit if we end up doing that I don't know so that's everything um today there's not a whole lot of football on that we care a lot about so um I'm gonna go make lunch and then I'm going to have the book sisters live discussion this afternoon and um that will hopefully pull me out of my little funk of like oh, you guys I'm so frustrated with myself both for not being as attentive of a parent as I want to have been and for not pushing your record both are both are moments of me being real, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, uh, I hope your weekend is going great. And we'll talk to you when I have more to say about this or when I pick something else up. Because I've been all about reading multiple things lately. <laughs>
Um, today we're going to be watching the Chiefs game. We're going to be just doing stuff around the house. It is 29 degrees and it's almost 11 o'clock, so I don't think it's going to be an outside day. Um, it is going to be just kind of an indoor get stuff done day, I hope, you guys. So if you saw yesterday's um, Book, Book Sisters live show, it, it was so fun. It was a great chat and we talked about... Um, like end of the year stuff, goals for next year. Like we talked about such great stuff. But in like towards the end of it, I got a text from Jeremy saying like, hey, can you come downstairs as soon as you can? So I'm like, hey, what's going on? Like I had already talked about, I, I don't know if I talked about it in this vlog, but um, Annie had a super high fever from her shots. And so my anxiety level, like it, I'm generally an anxious person. I struggle with anxiety in life. But one of my biggest triggers is my kids being sick or injured. Like, um, I have talked about, I know, my legit fear of vomit. But more than that, like, if something is wrong with them, I, like, can't, like, it, it makes me anxious to be away from them in any way, shape, or form. And um, so she had that high fever. So I had her sleep with me because it was her first fever. I didn't know anything. And so then... The next day, um, she woke, like, she was fine. She did not have a fever anymore, but it's just still, like, you know, I don't know. You could tell she still is not feeling quite right. And so then, and that was yesterday, that next day. And so then he texted me that, and I was like, hey, what's going on? You, like, yes, I'll come down as soon as I can, but what's going on? And I was like, you know, my anxiety is already super high. Don't text me that unless you're going to tell me what's going on. And so he was like, well, Annie hit her head. And so I said, okay, bring her up. And so he brought her up, and um, she, like, I guess he was changing her on the couch, and he just turned for a second, and she is so mobile now that she just rolled off and hit her head on the coffee table. And um, so he brought her up. Thankfully, he grabbed an ice pack right away and put it on her head. And so today, it's really just bruised, not swollen. It missed her soft spot. Um, last Yesterday, too, I was checking her eyes constantly, checking her motor function, and she was doing great. And again, I had her sleep with me. But you guys, I just can't, like, that kind of stuff, I, I, it just raises me to a level of anxiety that I have a really hard time coming down from. And I, I know you can see it at the end of the book, sisters. I just kind of um, check out and can, like, I have no appetite, nothing. I just want to stare at my kids. And I think that is pretty common in some regards. But the level of anxiety, like now, I'm still just at this place where it's like my kids are two and a half and six months old. And they're, they're so resilient but so fragile. And I just have a very hard time um, calming down anxiety when it's already high. This COVID time is high. December is, you know, I mean, there's just a lot going on. Uh, Jeremy is leaving tomorrow for the better part of the week. And I just am not in a great mental space or like anxiety space or whatever. So, um, yeah, that is just kind of where I'm at. I just want to be transparent because I know a lot of people suffer with anxiety, depression, whatever it may be. I um, definitely am on the anxious side of I just get very wound up very easy and cannot calm myself down, cannot chill out. Um, yesterday, I had to do a lot of apologizing to everybody, my two-year-old, my husband, all of that because I am just... Um, when I get like this, like everything is very stimulating and everything is very anxiety provoking and things that never bother me, bother me. And so it's, it's a rough spot to be in. I'm, we're talking about if he would be able to move things around just because I'm not sure, like with Annie, you know, it's kind of right here on her head. And so I don't know if there could be lingering effects. I don't know. You know, I just am really nervous to be completely by myself with both of them. And last night, for the first night ever, she would not go down. Just could not get comfortable. Like, I don't know if she was in pain or just overtired. I don't know. But she just, like, normally, she's pretty easy. Like, you feed her, put her down. She may fuss for a second, but she's pretty good. And last night, she was just, nothing was working. And... You know, I'm just like, I, I am, I'm nervous because if something happens, I don't know how to do it with both of them. And, you know, nothing big like this has ever happened and bless her heart. She kind of got two things back to back. So, um, it's been a rough weekend in our household and I'm, I told them this morning, I was like, I need a weekend from this weekend. So 
Um, we'll see how the week goes, what's going on. But so maybe this book I'm about to talk about is not fair that I am doing what I'm doing, but I'm going to DNF, uh, the house at the end of hope street because I'm reading this physically. I'm listening to it on audio. I'm trying all the things and I'm just not into it. And so again, I don't know if it's like the headspace I'm in or if it's the book, but this is a very whimsical. I think it, it might even say that in the description somewhere. There's just blurbs on the back, but it's very whimsical about, and it's a story about this woman who stumbles upon this house on Hope Street and a bunch of literary and like different famous women from the past have lived there. And there's pictures of them and stuff on the walls, but they are alive. And so she's interacting. There's also like uh, two other women that live there and two guys, all of all of which are people who have run out of hope. That's why they come to this house. And so we get to see their lives, but it's almost like whimsical to the, like whimsical is not a word that I typically associate with books that I like. Like a lot of whimsy um, just is not my, my personal preference. And so maybe it's that. And it, it almost feels like so outlandish and far-fetched that I just can't buy into it. And like, it's not super well explained. And we're mainly following these three women that live in this house. And I like can kind of keep their stories straight, but I am not emotionally invested in a single one. So one of them has, uh, like she was cheated with, like cheated on or broken up with by her fiance. One of which has found out like she has a dad that she didn't know about. And so she's kind of in an existential crisis. You know, there's just different things, but none of it has been emotionally engaging. So I'm halfway through and I don't care what happens to these ladies. And the guy's stories are very like hyperbolic, like very dramatic. And I, um, I just am not liking this. And so I think, you know, there's so many books that I want to read. And this may be just not the right book at the right time. But I I think I can say with enough confidence this is just not the writing style for me. And um, But I know somebody's going to like this. So I'm going to give it two stars because I've read more than half of it. And I'm going to say, like, not for me, but maybe for somebody else. So that's all for reading. I have no idea what I'll pick up tonight. I'm like kind of just, you know, when when I'm in this anxious state, I can't really like focus as well on things. And so like physically reading, I don't know if it would happen. Audiobook reading, even that, like especially with Annie being sleeping with me, I've just been kind of like watching her. Um, and my like watch later list for book two is so long. So I, I don't know. Um, today I probably won't take a nap just because um, there's so much I need to do. And with Jeremy leaving tomorrow, like I've kind of got to get stuff done. And so, and just when I'm wound up like this, like keeping moving is like stopping is just not productive and, or not helpful, I guess. And so maybe it should be, um, I don't know, but so I don't know if I'll pick anything else up. If I do, it'll be bedtime. So you'll see it in the next vlog. I, I mean, I will at some point, but you'll see it in the next vlog. So that is everything. Um, I may add on a clip to the end of this of our, whatever our advent for today is. We have not done it because, oh, this morning um, I gave Annie her first food. And so I think I talked about it earlier, but we we do baby load weaning with both of our kids. And so um, that just means you give them pieces of like what you're eating. And so this morning I gave her some strawberries and she loved it. She was so excited, so happy, and had so much fun with it. And she did so good. Like, Ainsley, we started her, I think, maybe like a week before she was six months. And she, it was like a while before she could even like grab stuff and put it in her mouth. Like that, that kind of um, hand-eye coordination was just not quite there with Ainsley. Now, Annie is six months in a day, and she just grabbed it got it. She started to drop it. She like caught it. And Jeremy and I were talking. I really, 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 really try hard not to compare the girls, especially like in front of them. But, um, Annie is definitely more advanced in like the physical things, the athleticism, the gross motor things. But Ainsley, on the other hand, like has very good fine motor skills. So it's, it's interesting to watch how different they are, but Annie got it quick. And so, um, yeah, my sister was like, are you sure you want to try that when you're so anxious? Because with baby led weaning, there does come some gagging and stuff. Not frequently, but um, she's like, can you handle it if she starts gagging? And yeah, I can. Um, I I don't know. So 
Um, she had strawberries for breakfast, and I think I made some sweet potatoes because we were going to do this last night, but then with her head and stuff, I was like, I don't know what her tummy's feeling like. I don't want to push anything. It's been enough of a day. Let's not let's not do that. So I made some sweet potatoes, so I might give her some of that later. Um, and again, you just like cut it in fingers, like finger shapes or whatever, so she can kind of gnaw on it. And then um, I also made some muffins that are the banana, peanut butter, spinach, and oats. And so um, I might give her one of those. I don't know. Um, it's really fun to like experiment with things. It's a little scary because Ainsley did not have any allergies, except we think she's probably lactose intolerant. Annie appears to be soy intolerant, which I guess goes frequently with lactose intolerance. Um, and the only way we know that is by when I eat soy, things happen to her. And so, um, like, I'm really nervous. But we'll see. I've been very intentional about eating peanut butter, eating eggs, eating all those things. So she's getting some of that through milk. But I don't know. We'll see. So stay tuned for that adventure. And we'll talk to you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.